actually not four because there are four, but to put together the paperwork and get everything, the legalities right with regards to awareness for child trafficking in Africa. And this is um, the bulk of it. So that is who we are and what we do. Um, we raise awareness, provide education and human trafficking, gender-based violence, and the effects thereof. We do not do counseling because we focus on prevention. We're preventing, we're not putting the plaster on the sore. We want to prevent the sore from taking place or the scar or the wound in the first instance. But we do refer when we encounter and do encounter of course victims to reputable experience. Um, and certified counsellors and wherever else we need to refer, like DSD law enforcement and wherever else we must be referred. Um, we have various campaigns and yes, prevention, disaster relief and poverty relief, we do a lot of that. Just recently we've done an orphanage Africa campaign, we've done a lot of that. We are involved with the Western Cape disaster flood relief as well. So whenever those disasters hit, we do know that that's, those are perfect storms for our perpetrators to actually um, take advantage of people's vulnerabilities. So we tap in. So whilst we provide food relief and whatever else it is that we can, because of our gear, our gear is geared up with all the numbers and everything that is there, awareness. So there's times we say very little, but just that awareness and the numbers that they see and when they speak to us, we are able to then say to people, be aware, caution, this could happen, and don't do this. And um, if you need any kind of help, should you find yourself in a situation, and we encourage them where we are. Take a picture of the numbers at the, at, that, that's on the back of our t-shirt, so you then keep it on hand. So that's one form of um, prevention awareness. Um, and of course, understand the root cause of all of these things which we um, had covered yesterday already. And then our projects, many projects on the go. Um, let's, we actually have to create that please. Let's look after our girls and boys this weekend. We just went with our boys. Uh, at, uh, um, boys began in El Dorado Park, which actually across South Africa. And they are um, celebrating 140 years. And it's, Children from impoverished communities, there are girls as well, which they take in, and, and it's something like Boy Scouts, teaching life skills, um, and in order to better themselves and to be beacons of light in their communities, and to grow up um, being better men, good men, and men that will um, take a stand, and not just take a stand, but, you know, not just accept second best for themselves, but obviously, and know that these social ills are out there and to advocate against them. So, um, these are our various projects. Our most common project is our No to Violence campaign and Stop the Traffic, which I'm pleased to say um, is now coming to fruition and next year it will be rolled out. So, Department of Social Development, we will be speaking to you shortly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's something quite digital to be rolled out through the schools to children between the ages of 10 and 18 or preventative. I have spoken about it before at a conference of ours and we hear that, but it's finally coming to fruition. It's been trademarked and um, this will be rolled out um, throughout South Africa and thereafter the rest of the continent and then globally. Um, I won't go through all of this. Um, you can actually for the sake of time. Um, Orphanage Africa I mentioned, and of course we have our self-defense workshops which we do at the shelters and stuff, which is proved to be really of great help. Surprisingly, you just think you're teaching somebody a skill, but from a mindset purpose, it has a great impact as well. And it goes to confidence and um, yeah. I will continue with the next slide. What is prevention and why is it important? And this is the reasons why we are doing what we do. It's to represent activities that stop an action or behavior from occurring in the first place. Um, and we refer to those avenues to promote a positive action or behavior. So all of our projects that you see is aimed at doing that. Promoting those kind of positive actions. Tangibility is what's key. So it's no use us having a whole lot of awareness and education. It's 
in the sphere of that fear and we all go home and that's it. What next? And that is always the question, even in a forum like this, what is next? What is tangible? What action that's going to make a difference, even if it's in one person's life? That one person is a family, it's a community, it's generations. So again, at the Africa's focus, prevention of and breaking the cycles of human trafficking and GDB and if. And again, our projects, just highlighting that again. Why is prevention better? Simply put, our prevention is better than cure because prevention leaves you with a certainty that something bad will not happen. So that is why we focus on it. We are sitting with a whole lot of dysfunction in our country, globally in fact, and it starts in our children, with our children, we see it daily. Um, Captain Levita, DSP, and has been to school not so long ago. It was tragic. I'm faced with it every day in the community that I come from. We see the dysfunction of these children. These children are growing up and they being adults. So what happens is they're carrying that dysfunction over into their families. So your GDP, the rates, spikes, human trafficking spikes. And then on top of it, your social, your, your, from your work perspective, your economy declines because people cannot function optimally in the workspace. Mm. So they are broken, they are dysfunctional with all the issues that they are um, living with and the children are growing up with. So that is why prevention is better. And then we have our prevention strategies. Prevention is prevention is prevention. Simple. Um, it ends with how people think, how they feel, how they act, and focusing on the messages and activities of areas of influence, such as the individual, the family. Family breakdown is, is important. And in my opinion, um, not just my opinion, but in Africa's opinion, for us to break these cycles, it doesn't matter what great laws we have in place. We can have the best, and South Africa does have. If you look at our, our acts in terms of gender-based violence, human trafficking, wow. Um, but where's the breakdown taking place? The situation's working. But in the family unit, individuals, but in the family unit, back to basics. Parents need to be parents. And that is something that is not happening. We're leaving our parenting to the cell phones, to the laptops, to other people, to money, if we have money, yes, our money goes to the mall. But sitting down with the child, actually community, spending quality time, not quantity, I can spend eight hours of my life or 12 hours with that child and still not have any quality. We just existing. And it's not just about existing as a parent, it's actually being a parent. And in today's age, that's part of prevention. Yeah. You need that high communication level, fostering that love uh, between parent and child, and a and, and, uh, 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 communication that is not vertical. You don't talk down to the child, you talk with your children so that the communication is open. Our children are faced with so much more than what we were faced with growing up. So our children need to feel comfortable and need to know that they can come and speak up to our, us as parents. That's first and foremost. Those are our safe spaces. Our homes are supposed to be our safe spaces, and it is not. Our schools are supposed to be safe spaces, and it is not. Our faith-based organizations are supposed to be safe spaces, and it is not. And lastly, even our workplaces are supposed to be our safe spaces, and it is not. So that is why prevention is, is integral here. Successful prevention increases the risk factors and enhances protective factors. And that is integral. So prevention activities. So it's information dissemination, which is what has been done here, which has been done yesterday, and which is part of awareness and education. So you're taking whatever your statistics what is happening within your community, within your country, continent, globally, and disseminating that information, breaking it down, and then working from there to find out tangible solutions. So that's also about prevention. The education, what are the alternatives? Problem identification and then referral. 
which is exactly what Act Africa does. Being community-based, you've got to start. You cannot um, work there and, and write it in front of you, under your nose, in your home. Um, the track is hitting the fan, if I might put it that way. You need to start there and then focus on it. As the saying goes, charity does begin at home. So you need to start within your own space. Environments, environmental strategies, so we know that climate change has a big impact, which we see now just happened with the flooding in the Western Cape, Durban, even how they cross climate change and because people are affected with the changes in climate, so work structures change, uh, people start migrating and it opens up vulnerabilities for uh, trafficking as well. Evidence-based practices and of course the social economic downturn that goes with climate change as well. That's the other thing. And then you have your evidence-based practices which then is, can be implemented um, obviously to make a difference and a positive change. So this gives you a bit of an impact of prevention services. So this is, um, I don't know if you can see it, hopefully you can, I don't think you can, but it's just letters <laughs> that have been written to ch from children to Act Africa to, to us. We, um, DPCI, Captain Levitso, um, um, DSD, and, and Act Africa went to school. The school wrote a letter to Act Africa asking, actually, the words were we big you to come to our school because it's so bad. It's a primary school where kids as young as nine and ten are sleeping with each other openly oh, behind the curtains in the school halls. Gangsters and drugs, you name it. It is in uh, one of the hot spots of trafficking in the south of Johannesburg. Needless to say, when I went through it, I, I said to the school, this is not awareness. I think the intervention needs to take place here. So people like DSP and, and um, um, the walks needs to come along and actually, um, you know, do what, do what they do best. And we went along and we had this awareness campaign and we brought along loot theater as well. Because we know with children, you can't talk to them in this way. It's in here and out here. You need to be interactive, you need to be engaging. And they put together a little skit to try and get through to the children and make some kind of impact, which it did. Um, look, one sock is not going to uh, kill a problem. It has to be something that is done regularly, that we know. So I'm in regular contact with the school and various other schools. So these are the letters that they've written, um, basically saying what they've learned, um, what impact it had on them. And I don't know if you can see, but um, if you look at some of them, it speaks about just the general social views of what is wrong and what is right. And that for me is quite a lot because you would expect that to be taking place in a home by a parent. You can't expect the teacher to be teaching that. It starts in the home. And these children are coming and they realize that this is, this is wrong and this is right. Um, and that for me is quite alarming because that leads to all the social ills, not knowing what is wrong and right, or just taking it for granted that I can get away with doing something wrong. And those are, are, are the things that fuel the social ills that we, that's existing in this country. That's our um, self-defense workshops that we did at one of the centers, and um, two of the, uh, Letters afterwards, in terms of you know the impact they had and what they thought of it, that came back. And um, one of the ladies actually mentioned it to me and said that she wished she had known what to do before a situation had um, arisen. So this lady was arrested multiple times, and she says, had she known um, some of the skills or learned some of the skill of self-defense it probably could have um, prevented her from being raped in the first, the first instance. Um, <coughs> and then there was also a victim of trafficking. Um, he was staying at the center and he went to the shop and someone, I don't know, quite know the whole story, but she ended up in another province and she was dragged out and in a brothel. 
So again, that lady expressed, and she said, when all of this happened, had I just known? So I said, look, this isn't the be all and the end all. Um, you trusted, obviously, and that's the first thing. You can't just trust somebody that comes along to you and that was a character. You cannot do that. And then, obviously, the tangible action to get away from a perpetrator, yes, self defense can help you um, and can save your life. So these are the things, self-image, um, bravery, confidence, which was installed in, in, in many of them. Um, just learning the art of um, self-defense, which in our case is Krav Maga, which is an Israeli form of self-defense, which we um, train. Yeah, so we will be doing this in the community we learn into the kids that are in a very impoverished look, some of them can teach us a thing or two with the street fighting, but in terms of discipline and learning that self-defense is not meant for you to kill the next person, but actually meant for you to uh, protect yourself and get away so that you can get out. But obviously, if you're in the case of life and death, you have to do what you must do. Um, and those are the imp that's the impact of prevention services and other things. Um, that I've just mentioned before. And this we gone over yesterday, this is just part of what we do, some of the first things that we've done, that's in 16, that was been in COVID, just in a few months. And this is a recent thing, a global data hub on human trafficking that's given some figures on, on, on cases globally. So as we know, statistics are not exact things, it's all estimates. And um, where the orange areas is indicated as where are uh, the, the most prevalent areas of human trafficking. And that's gender based violence statistics. Our social media handle. And yes, you can donate to us. Please, every cent comes, we need it. Nowadays, <laughs> so please do. Um, that's the QR code and banking detail. And your um, obviously assisting us for saving lives, help us with saving lives. That's our PDO, um, Section 88 Dutch Certificate. And thank you very much for your time and attention. And God bless you all. Thank you very much.